Oh, well. Uh, you spooked me again there, friend and family. I'm glad to see you over here this evening, Sunday evening. I thought you might uh, sneak on back by, since y'all were with me for that walkabout, and talk about what we did. Uh, later this afternoon, of course. Getting on up there late now. And I gotta get, you know, meal prepared. And that what I'm having today and making, and I'll share with y'all, is an old favorite, old standby of my mama's and grandma's and great grandma's. And times were hard for my family in America. And that, and I know, you know, I did that video about meat. And this one here's about stretching meat too. But today I'm not stretching it so hard as mama would have done back when I was growing up. And she'd make this with a pound of ground meat if it was, you know, close first month. But as months went on by, towards the end of the month, I might get down to a quarter pound. <laughs> That's why I always knew what time of the month it was. We only bought groceries once a month after daddy got paid from the army. Yep. They were good about that. They made sure they paid all the bills first. Then they bought all the food for the month. What was left, what was, even though it wasn't much, that was it. At least we had food, necessities, and the bills were paid. For the most part. But I did want to share this with y'all. And there'll be plenty enough for y'all. So let me show you what you got to have. And we'll get this here dish all together. So like all things, you're going to need a few things. And I always try to tell you what you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need some good old hamburger. And I took this out of the freezer. Uh, this is from two years ago. And it's a pound and a half. Now, it's a pound and a half because I'm going to have to cook this up. And then uh, split some off. You know, the kitty crew and Trixie. And I'll even do that before I put in my uh, onions and my garlic. And that. But you're going to need another few things. You're going to need some ground black pepper, sure enough. Some salt, your choice. You can use Himalayan sea salt. or I'm just going to use regular old table salt. Unidized. Now, Mama, she'd use garlic powder and that. And I do too when I don't have fresh garlic. Now, my daddy, he'd get so upset with my mama, especially when we were gardening and we had fresh garlic. And she'd still use garlic powder. Or she'd use these minced uh, dry garlic. But Mama was always quick to say, well, Jim, if you don't like it, you don't got to eat it. But today, I'm going to use fresh garlic. But I'll tell you, in case you want to use the garlic powder, just how much of that to put in there, too. That's what you want to do. You're going to need an onion right here. And I got one of those there, yellow onions, my preference. You're going to need some flour. All purpose. Now you can use self riding really in this here uh, particular recipe, really don't matter. And today, because I got one, this nice fine green bell pepper that I picked a couple days back, I'm gonna put that in there. Now, mama wouldn't have put it in there, or none of my other ladies in my family. Though Mr. Tom's gonna put it in there, because I like green bell pepper and that. So that's your fresh ingredient. And you're going to need some milk. I've got some whole milk here. And that. And what I'm going to, and you could eat this on many things. But 99% of the day, back in the day, we ate this over potatoes. Potatoes was something we had almost every day of the week. I mean, back, back there in the 50s and 60s, 70s, uh, that phrase, meat and potatoes, it just wasn't a phrase. That was way of life. But on occasion, and those would be rare, Mama would cook up some rice. Now, if we had potatoes. Potatoes were always 
her number one go-to. If we didn't, then she might go to rice. And on an extremely rare occasion, she might use some of these here egg noodles. But you would go with any one of these. It'll be just fine. In fact, you can switch it up. Because once you make the hamburger gravy, you know, you ain't mixing it with the potatoes, the rice, or the egg noodles. You put it on top. So if one or two meals you want to have it over potatoes, and you want to switch it up, have it over egg noodles, or rice, you can do that. And like always, you're going to need a nice sharp knife, measuring spoons, measuring cup, and a cutting board. And then finally, to put it all together, you're gonna need some kind of frying pan. Now you can use one of them there fancy modern high-tech non-stick. I got one, just one left. I normally just use that for scrambled eggs because I'm lazy. Not that this one won't cook fine scrambled eggs. Or you can use stainless steel if you want to. Or like I've got here, my 40 year old cast iron skillet. I just wish I had a $5 bill for all the meals this here. Fine skillet is cooked. Yep, and I just added some re-seasoning to it. See how shiny it is? She's ready to go and screaming to cook. So y'all, what I'm gonna do so I'm going to get these air uh, veggies cut up. I'm not going to bore you with that. I think you all know how to chop them up. And that. I'm going to get the potatoes peeled up. And cubed up. Get them in some water. And I'll get everything prepped and ready. And then. We'll start getting this ground beef to start to cook off. We'll start adding our. Veggies. Our seasoning. Our flour to thicken, and then finally our milk and some water, or you can use beef stock, vegetable stock, whatever. I think I actually got some leftover beef stock. Not enough, so I'll probably have to add some water to you. So we'll be back in just a minute. I'm gonna try to get Trixie to help me. Let's check in, see if she's willing to cooperate today. Tricks. You want, are you going to help Papa cut up the veggies? No. Why? I need your help. Don't make me go out there and get Magoo. Because you know Magoo. Magoo will do it. You sure? You sure you don't want to help Papa? Huh? Okay. You're going to help. Okay. Looks like Trix is going to help us. So we're going to get it going on. Well, y'all. Went ahead and cut up those uh, onions. That's one uh, medium onion. I like a lot of onion mine. You don't like so much? Use a half onion. I cut up that one uh, green bell pepper I picked up the other day. Here again. You don't like green bell pepper? Don't put it in there. Or cut it back some. It's up to you. And rather than use the garlic powder like Mama would have, or my other ladies in my family, I cut me up four cloves of fresh garlic. Got the hamburger sitting there ready. Put me in a little extra oil in my old cast iron skillet. Sure did. Because that had a ground beef 80 20. And this is one of the times. You're going to want a little fat. You're going to want to drain it off. Because you're making gravy. And if you don't have the fat. You're not going to get a good gravy. And you're not going to have the flavor. We've got all the potatoes all cubed, peeled and cubed up. Right over here. Get them to cooking. And then over here. We got us. Some of our own. Rattlesnake pole beans. Yep, got them slowly cooking. Yep, right there. And I'll show you right here. Right here. You can plainly see. 
green beans. Yep, froze these on August the 15th, 2019. That's the good thing about gardening. You make your own food. And I suggest all of you do that. So what we're going to get doing now is we're going to get this ground beef cooking. So let me all set you all up. And we'll get on with it. Okay. Went ahead and heated up our cast iron pan. Got an oil here in it. And that's a little pro tip for you. Want to make sure you heat up cast iron. Well, you know, at least a good 5-10 minutes. Now it does retain heat real well. But it does take a while to get up to temp. Yep. So now we're ready to get that there ground beef on in there. Yep, and of course I got tricks laying in the floor right now. Ooh, can you hear that sizzle? Can you hear that? Oh, Trish can. Cause she just started to perk up. Oh yeah. Here's the sizzle. And then we're going to just start breaking it up. Yes, we are. We'll get her sort of kind of broke up here before we start breaking it up a little bit small like I said normally I'd use a pound of uh, ground beef and you can you can do like my mama did mm -hmm. grandmama you can use a little less than you know what you uh, can afford in your situation But I happen to have quite a bit on hand. You know, that freezer over there that you can see right next to the stove is slap full of uh, meat and all kinds of veggies and such stuff. So, we're going to work it down some. Except for, you know, going out buy me some bread and a few fresh things and snacks I miss which I only done that once and I took y'all with me sometime back in June I ain't been grocery shopping but I'm thinking about going again I'm starting to get slim on bread now I get I could bake me up some bread and I might I ain't done that Lord knows when. But you just want to break this up. Now here's another tip about stretching this meat. Now you can leave it a little bit chunky right now. And that, if you got plenty of meat, or what you can do if you got just a little bit of meat, you break it up all into nice little smaller pieces. And that way all through that there gravy you're going to have some meat. That's another way I knew mom was getting slim on meat. The size of the ground beef and her recipes go from chunky and smaller and smaller as the month went by. Sure did. And that's why I was saying, you know, on that meat video and the follow-up I did, Sunday during the walkabout, you know, me and the kitty crew. People complain a lot in the U.S., but we still got it better than almost any other country in the world. And I've been too old about, oh, well, right offhand, 40 or 50 of them, maybe even more. Back when I was younger, I traveled a lot in my profession as well as my service to all of y'all in this great country. That being said, I never really found a place that I thought more of than I thought of America. 
Some were close. So now all we're going to do is let this meat cook a bit and get her slightly brown. You don't have to get it brown. You can do like everybody I see. Of course, my mama was bad about that. She'd cook her meat. wouldn't really be brown. just be sort of that gray, you know. And it'd be cooked. But I'm telling you one thing. You put a little brown on this. Ooh, it's going to boost up that flavor. Yes, it is. And I've said that before. In other videos I've done on cooking. And we'll just let her cook up. And you're going to see a lot of water moisture here. You can already start to see it. We're going to let that cook off. Let her get a little bit of brown. And then, we're going to start seasoning. Adding in the chopped vegetables as we get closer. We sure are. So we got it broke up pretty good there. We ain't going to bring it down to just fine granules because we got plenty of meat. Of course, I am going to lose about a quarter pound to a third pound here when I scoop some out for the kitty crew and Trixie and Magoo that are in the house. Because no tricks. She'll never let me forget it if I don't. So I don't season right now. Now, if they weren't in the house. I'll be adding my seasoning in too. So, we'll uh, let this cook a bit. We'll be right back. We got some snacks, chips, dip, and some cold drinks in the fridge. Y'all get what you need. Take a seat in the living room and dining room. I'll come chat with you a while. Okay, we got that meat coming on. It's not quite brown yet. It hasn't quite cooked off all the moisture. That's okay. Now we're going to put in our veggies. We'll put in that there. Green bell pepper. Yep, yep. Slide it on in there. We're going to put in our onion. And that. Slide that all in there. Yep. Now, we ain't going to put the garlic in just right yet. No. Because if you let your garlic burn, it'll get bitter on you. Trust me that. It'll do it. Now, we're going to continue cooking. Break up our onions some. Of course, they'll break up on their own. And yes, I did give the kitty crew and Trix a little bit of hamburger meat there. Otherwise, she'd just be screaming. You don't hear her. She's quiet. In fact, actually, Magoo ate his. And he's asleep. And what used to be, I guess still is, since he never come got his stuff, my son's better. Now these vegetables are going to sweat off more moisture. That's why I didn't want to wait until this uh, ground beef totally browned off. Just wanted to sort of get it cooked a little bit through here. Yep. Sure did. And now is when you're going to want to give it a little bit of season. Of course, I mean, if you wasn't cooking for your kitty crew, you can season as soon as you start out. But I gotta take care of the kitty crew too. They're my little furry friends. You know, not like I got any other family right here. So let me uh, get seasoned, so let's get that going on. 
So the first thing we're going to put on in here, we're going to put a teaspoonful of salt. Like I said, your choice. Himalayan. You can put you some of that there. Sea salt in there, kosher salt. I don't care. You know, just whatever you got. You know, I'm just going to go with some regular old table salt. Non iodine. Sure am. Next, we're going to put this in some ground black pepper. Now, if you got one of them pepper grinders, you can use that too. Get you some of that there fresh. Oh, it's just all the more better. But hey, we didn't have that back in the day. I don't even remember nobody. Not none of my friends' houses, none of my relatives' houses, none of the women in my family ever have a pepper grinder. No. Nope. Normally they just had a box just like this. Said McCormick's black pepper. And there you have it. Simple. Now on occasions I will jazz it up and I'll put me in some oregano you know I like to spice things up but I said this time other than you know green peppers right here I make it like mama did grandmama did you know great grandma and they were all fantastic cooks by the way but they didn't have a spice cabinet chock full of spices like I do. They sure didn't. Their go-to's was garlic powder and onion powder. Poultry seasoning. Cayenne, chili powder. Cumin. Salt, pepper. Now I'm going to tell you what. Food was still tasty. Yes, it was. Now look at that. Now what we're going to do is let, let's just continue cooking until those vegetables get cooked up a bit. This ground beef gets a little bit brown. Of course, I'm making a mess. Trixie will be mad because she'll she's on a cleanup duty. You know she's got to wash the dishes, clean up the stove. Or she swears it's Magoo's turn, but y'all know if you watched my last cooking video, Magoo had to step in to help. His tricks wouldn't. So we'll just let that continue cooking. And we'll bring you back for the next stage. Okay, y'all. We've got that uh, meat continued to cook. Got those uh, onions softened, green bell pepper, and uh, sweated off all the moisture from them. So now, we're just going to put on in our garlic. Mix that all the way through right now. Get that good and incorporated all in there, all over the place. Of course, it'll eventually be all up through there too as we make the gravy which is about the next step now how long you cook this after you add the vegetables is totally up to you if you like your vegetables a little crunchier don't sweat them down so much you know I like just a tad bite not really crunch See, now we got that garlic on in there. And it, garlic don't take long to cook, especially if you got it finely minced up like old Mr. Tom did. And you can use some of that jarred garlic if you want. Or like I said, you could sprinkle you in about a teaspoonful garlic powder like Mama did. Or do like I did. Put you in four finely minced up Fresh cloves of garlic. Ooh, because that fresh garlic, all the more better. So, 
Now, we'll let it cook for a couple of minutes, and then we got to start adding the flour. Start making that gravy. So we let that garlic cook in there a few minutes. It don't take that long. Now what we're going to do is be adding in our flour. Yep. And you're just going to sprinkle in about three tablespoons. Now, try to distribute it. Don't worry. Doing it this way, because we still got that fat on in there, we ain't going to have no clumpiness. I tried to teach my mama that. Because now she made flavor gravy. Ain't no doubt. But her gravy always tend to be a little bit clumpy. And we're just going to put in three tablespoons right there. See that? Now we need to mix that on in there. With that there grease. You can hear that. Hamburger meat sizzle. Yes, sir. We're just going to get that all nice and mixed up in that meat. Now is when you sort of got to move a little bit. And you're going to let that flour cook some. So if you don't let your flour cook, have you ever had a gravy that sort of had that raw flour taste to it? Well, that's because you just didn't let it cook. Okay, it don't take long. Let's mix it on up in there. You don't want it to burn to the bottom either. Now what we're gonna do, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add one cup of beef broth. That's something mama didn't do. She just put in a cup of water and drop in a couple beef bouillon cubes and you can do that as well. Now we're just going to give that a little mix, get it all on the bottom because that beef broth, that's going to deglaze that pan some too. Because it don't take no time for that flour to burn to the bottom of your skillet. So that's why, you know, you got to put the phone away. Don't be worrying about things. You're cooking. Not watching YouTube, surfing the internet. And then the next thing you're gonna put in there is one cup of milk. Yep. Right there. Now that was another thing mom may or may not do depending on what time of the month it was. She might just put in another cup of water and throw in a couple more of those beef bouillon cubes. Mama liked those beef bouillon cubes. In fact, I can't even remember her ever having no uh, canned beef broth. And that was just their time. And see, then what all you're going to do is you're going to let this cook till it thickens up to your desired consistency. Yep. That's all it takes. It's looking pretty, ain't it? That's why I like to add those bell peppers in there. If I'd had a red ripe one, I'd put some of that in. And it looked downright festive. And it's all thickening up here in a short amount of time. Now I'm gonna set the oven on warm because I still gotta get my potatoes prepared. It's already looking good. I can't wait. Beans are finished up. 
This is going to be a fine down home meal that's going to stick to your rib. Can you see that gravy sticking in all right up? And there ain't the first clump to be seen. Now where my mama went wrong, she would never listen to me. She got mad at me. She'd take her flour, run her some water in her measuring cup. She'd dump her flour in, take a fork, and beat it. Yep. Sure would. Of course, that wouldn't get all the clumps out. Then she'd just dump it on in there. Like I said, it wasn't that it wasn't tasty. Every once in a while, you'd hit one of those pieces of flour. You know, see how that's coming together? See how nice and uh, thick that gravy's getting? Oh, yeah. Here again. You can let this cook down to be as thick as you want. Well, it's coming together about fine. And that's another thing. If it thickens up too much, just take you some more water. Pour on in there. Now I wait till I hear those bubbles going sort of poof, poof, poof. You hear them now? You hear that? It's getting right about there. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that gray. So I'm going to turn the heat off. I got the oven heating up to about 170. And I'm going to let this sit in the oven while I get these taters finished up. Then we're going to put this plate together and we're going to enjoy it. Now something I forgot to tell you. Once you get that gravy thickened up and everything the way you like it, you're going to want to taste test it. And I just did that before I brought you all back over here. I want a little more pepper. Because I like a little peppery taste. And I also want just a touch more salt. So I put in a quarter teaspoon more of that there uh, ground black pepper and a half a teaspoon more salt. You see, we're going to mix that on. Garlic was just fine. But I could tell it needed a little more salt because, you know, a lot of people don't understand, of course, got it. You know, if you're a senior, one of those old, oldsters, you got to watch out for the salt. Now, I don't eat much salt. Nope. Because, I mean, if you eat a lot of processed foods, which I don't, and processed meats, which I do on occasion, normally don't, fast food and all that. The salt is just outrageous. See, we just mix that on up in there. Just like that. Now, we're going to take a taste of it. Yes, sir. Right there. Don't take much. And then we're going to blow on a bit. Because it's hot. Now to try it. I want to taste it. Tell me what you think of it while I take it. Back to. Oh yeah. That did it. It's dead on now. That did it. And I'll have to make that little amendment to my recipe card or sheet of paper. Because tonight I was just making this off memory. Ooh, look how creamy that gravy is. Ooh, doggy. And you, you can have this over biscuits, cornbread, or like I said, over rice, egg noodles. You know, not we having it over taters. That's what I got to do next. I got to finish up those taters. Well, that's good enough. Mama be proud. Oh, yeah. So, we're going to set this on in the oven on the horn and get our taters done. Then we'll come back. I'll make me up a plate 
plate for y'all. And we'll sit down there at the uh, dining room table. And we'll enjoy and have some good conversation while we eat. Well, hamburger gravy is all finished, nice and thickened. And that got our potatoes all smashed up and made. And we got our green beans all done. Only thing we got left to do now is make us up a plate. Sit down, relax. And remember the memories of a time long since gone by. Mama made this up at least once a week. Yep, now I'm looking forward to it. So let me get a plate and we'll get this going on right now. Went ahead and got me some mashed taters put on my plate. Oh, y'all, plates are over there in the cupboard. First one to the left. And that. Now, I gotta find something to get this gravy on with. Hold on a minute. We had to go get us one of them there. Fancy label, ladles. Let's get us some of this out here. Ooh, yeah, and this is just how we used to have it all the time. Nice, fine bed of it. Mashed taters there. Nothing special. Little milk put in them. And uh, some butter, salt, touch of pepper. We were good to go. Now we're going to put us on some green bean. Oh, yeah. Right there. Look at there. Mashed taters. Hard time hamburger gravy. Green beans fresh out of the garden. Oh, they were frozen from last year. They were fresh then. Now all we gotta do is get us some bread. I was gonna make some garlic toast, but I think I'll just make up some buttered white bread. Just like we used to have back in the day. Well, y'all, there you have it. Finished hamburger gravy over mashed taters. Got some green beans. And we just made up some simple white loaf of bread with butter. Just like back in the day. You can't ask for no better. Okay? Let me give you a taste test. If you enjoy it. Yeah, we can give, grab those plates out of the cupboard down there. Start putting your plate together. Here. Give us a nice bite of it right there, okay? Let me try it first, make sure it's good enough for you, okay? Oh, here. You go ahead and have that bite. Mmm. How you like it? And now it's my turn. I've been working on this a while, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, that reminds me time long gone by. My mama made it. Or my grandmother and my great-grandma made it. They all three made it. And I've made it many times. Simple. Cheap. And depending on how scarce meat is, you slim down some on the meat, make more gravy, make more taters, rice, egg noodles. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed cooking in the old country kitchen tonight with old Mr. Tom and Trixie. Magoo, he's been asleep all the time. He tuckered out, been outside. Until I see y'all on the next video, I want y'all to take care. Stay safe out there. And God bless each and every one of you your friends, your family, and loved ones. Goodbye for now. Tricks, you want to say goodbye? Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Don't be attacking me. I gave you hamburger. There's no more left. It's got onions and green peppers in it. You can't have it.
Oh, gonna turn your back, walk away from it. Be that way. Later on.